So hi there. Today we're going to look at how to cater for different resolutions, different screen sizes, um, yes, especially on mobile devices, and how we can manipulate our GUI text or our GUI textures or anything that you've done within the Yong GUI method, and how you can scale them all and resize them just depending on the resolution. And we're also going to look at how we can do that efficiently as well and the best way of doing it. Um, so let's quickly show you what's going to happen. So this is my setup at the moment. I have these two GUI labels with the GUI box behind it. These have been called for my own GUI method. And I've also got a couple of GUI textures and some GUI text. And then you can see here if I scale it, change the window size, everything readjusts. Um, for this, though, it's, it only adjusts based on its height. I haven't made it just based on the width. Uh, and that's how most games work. You see most games work in landscape. If you're working on a project that's portrait though, then you might want to base it on the width instead. Um, yep, so that's what we're going to be looking at. So let's see how to do it. Um, the first thing is what we want to know when the window has changed size. Um, I've seen loads of people, especially in the on GUI method, uh, rather than calculating the size of your rectangles and then just storing it, and using that value, uh, they calculate the size every single time within the on GUI method, and that's just, it's such a waste of performance that, that you've got absolutely no need to do that. Uh, you only need to calculate the size that should be when there's been a change or start up. Um, so, in our resolution manager here, uh, this is what's going to tell us when there's been a size change, and this is what gonna, what's going to let everything else know. Um, so, we've got an event. Uh, which is our resolution changed handler and this is what all our GUI stuff's going to subscribe to to know when there's been a resolution change um, you see our handler here this is this delegate here so sending a object in resolution changed event args here's my resolution changed event args class uh, we're just storing screen width and screen height um, so that's our event. Then we've got some private member variables. We've got our screen width and screen height, which we're going to store. I've also got this stack boolean here, M quitting. That's uh, just to stop some bugs happening. Um, you'll see where I use that shortly. And I've got these properties here, screen width and screen height. Um, so the setters for these are pretty similar. I just check if the values are equal. If they are equal, then return. Don't want to execute anything. Uh, but if it has changed, then we'll assign a new value and we'll execute this method here, resolution has changed. Um, and that method there, that just goes on and fires our event. Uh, so, so we've also got our singleton here. Um, you see I've used a dummy as well. If you're not sure about how to use dummies with singletons, I've got another video explaining them. Um, I had to do a little bit of manipulation though, again for this to stop some weird bugs from happening. Uh, main problem was when quitting the game uh, you'd go to quit the game and then all the other all your GUI textures and everything would start getting destroyed um, but when any of them get destroyed they need to unsubscribe from this event and the problem I was getting was the resolution manager was getting destroyed and then other things would still try and access the resolution manager and I'd start getting object didn't exist errors uh, so how I've got around that is if you're quitting the application, because that's the only time the resolution manager will get destroyed is when you quit, it'll just say we're, tr we're quitting to true. And then if anything tries to access our singleton, but we're quitting, it will just return a dummy rather than return an instance of this class. Um, so yeah, more a little bit more with our singleton as well. If we try and access it and it doesn't exist and we're not quitting, uh, we'll create one. And so that's it for the singleton. Um, again, since there's a chance that this, oh, in fact, this game object will have been created uh, in the games, and it would remain when you left the scene, and we don't want that, so we'll just destroy the game object. Uh, then we've got our awake, where we just assign our singleton. Uh, but if it's already been assigned, then we'll destroy it, so we don't want it. And then, so we've got our update method here. Uh, so we're all, we're content, every frame, we're assigning screen width, screen height. And then what that does is it goes up to its properties, checks if they're equal, if they are, all right, forget about it. Uh, then, But if they're not equal, there's been a change happened. Uh, so that's how we detect the changes. I say there's our event. And I've also got these two methods here, register event 
and deregister event. Now, the reason I've done it like that is I don't, I don't like it when things from other class directly access an event. Uh, I'd, much, I'd much rather have it encapsulated so I could do some... Yeah, if I wanted to, I could do some other manipulation to it. Um, you know I think, uh, But then I've also... I've also done it so for this dummy. So if I go to unsubscribe for something, but say we're quitting, uh, well, it doesn't really matter then, actually, because the, app, the whole application is going to quit. We don't really need to deregister. Um, so, I, but then I can so I can use this dummy, and then it'll just exe it will execute anything when you call this. Um, you'll see you'll see where I use these shortly. Um, yeah, so that's our resolution manager. And I say so that this is the only script you need now. And if you put this in your game, then you'll get an event fired every single time there's a window change. Okay, so the next part we're going to look at, we're going to look at uh, this abstract class I've created called GUI Component. Now, so I've done this mainly just to make our lives easier and just to speed things up a bit. Um, we've got a protected constant to float, this size modifier. Uh, again, you'll see where I use this shortly. Um, then we've got this start method, again, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It's just the standard start method. Uh, and then what we do in here is we execute this abstract method, start up. We then register our event. Uh, yeah, we register this resize method with the event on the resolution manager. And but the very first time we run the program, it uh, there won't have been a size change. Uh, so we'll just manually fire off the method just to make just to make sure it calculates it one at least once. Um, and then you see here, and then on destroy. This is it because in your game you you might be changing scenes or you, you one of your GUI textures or GUI text might get destroyed. Um, but because it's described to the event, if there was a resize after it had been destroyed, the uh, the resize method it's still trying to call this resize method because it's subscribed to the event. Uh, and then you, again you'd start getting uh, object don't exist errors. Uh, so whenever it's destroyed, we will deregister it. And that's it. Um, Again, why I've why I've done this start up, uh, this start method with this start up thing, uh, is because on your resize method, you're probably going to have some variables that you need to calculate, and start up will make sure those variables are calculated. So that's why start up get runs first, then we'll resize it. Um, so let's see how we can use this. We'll start with our GUI text. So I've got some GUI text here, bottom left, bottom right, both different sizes. Um, and then, so in our GUI text component script, I will save a reference to the GUI text. I will also save the original text size. And you see, that's what happened in our start method. We assign the text to get reference. Um, if we put this script on something and it doesn't have a GUI text, there's no point to it. Might as well destroy it. Um, but as long as we do have some GUI text, then we'll go, we'll store the original text size. And then to change text size depending on resolution, it's just this equation here. So there's our size modifier from our parent class. And um, to calculate that value, I had to just do a bit of trial and error. Um, so I say if it's not quite working for you, just try increasing or decreasing that a little bit, see the results you get. And yeah, that's a, the equation is just size modifier. We'll times it by the new screen height, and then we'll times it by the original text size. And then, so in here, you see I've got my GUI text here. Uh, so if we look at the font size, see it's 10 at the moment, and as we start increasing the screen height, it goes up, and if we lower it, it goes down. Uh, that's for the bottom right one. If we go on this one, you can see it's currently at 16. Okay, if we decrease it, it goes down, increase it, goes up. Uh, so that's how we can manipulate GUI text based on resolution. Uh, next, we'll have a look at these GUI textures here. So our GUI texture, again, we're deriving from GUI component. And in this, I'm storing a reference directly to the GUI texture. Uh, I'm also going to store the image ratio and the original height. Uh, now, the image ratio is because I always want it, I always want the image to always have the same ratio. Uh, you know, I don't want it squashed in a particular direction. And then, so we calculate its height, and then we'll calculate its width dependent on its new height using this ratio. And then, I'm also going to store the original height. And then it's a sort of, it's a similar methodology to the text uh, for the startup at least anyway. So we go through, we find our reference to the texture. If there's no texture, get rid of the script. Uh, we then calculate our image ratio, and then we'll also store our image height, our original height. 
And then in our resize method, uh, you see here we've calculate the height. Again, similar equation. We take the screen height, we times it by that size modifier, and then we times it by the original height. We then calculate our width based on the height. And then we assign a uh, new rect to the pixel inset on the texture. And then, so if we look at our GUI texture, so this is the top one, and that one. And then if you have a look at this pixel inset here, so you can see it's already calculated some values. And as we change the height, all the pixel inset values change dependent on the height. Again, they're not dependent on the width. And it's the same for this other one. So this is the middle one. You can see there all our values are changing. And then so that's how we do it for GUI textures. And then the last one is uh, on GUI. Um, now, I used to use on GUI a lot. Uh, it's a program where I quite liked being able to control everything through a code. But, uh, I mean, there are quite a few problems with it. I mean, for a start, you can't see it until you run the game, which is quite annoying. And as well, I've been reading uh, quite a lot. That has a lot of performance issues as well. Um, I can't say I've never noticed these performance issues, but it's not to say there isn't. Uh, but yeah, from from what I gather now, on GUI is not really the way to go forward. You're a lot better off using GUI text and GUI textures. But if you are still using the on GUI method, this is a uh, this is a way of doing it. Um, so first of all, we want to store the recs for each of our GUI objects. You can see here we've actually got four on GUI objects. We've got two labels and two boxes. Um, we've also got two styles. For each one, you see I've made them different si different font sizes here, and oh, we've also got our uh, our actual string that we're going to print, and then we're also going to store these original text sizes, a lot like the GUI text bit we did before. Um, so again, we've got our startup method. In this, we just store the original text sizes, uh, and then in our resize method, we manipulate the font size. Again, it's that same equation as before. Uh, we have to take the size modifier times it by the screen height times it by its original size. Uh, then for this we do a little bit of calculation as well to find out how big it's going to be. So we calculate the size dependent on the style it's going to use. And then using that size we will decide the recs to use. So for this one this was at the top left, so you can see it was zero, 0. And this second one, this is the one in the top right. And then you can see these in action if we if I expand these out, so if you watch the font size, see there as the height increases, the font size increases, as it decreases, font size increases. And it's the same for the second one, see that font size is currently 9, increase it, goes up to 13, decrease it, get it down to a 1. Um, yeah, so this is uh, quite a good methodology, I think, for scaling GUI components. Uh, I don't like messing about with the GUI dot matrix because it starts messing about with filtering and uh, rendering. It doesn't look quite right. Um, I much prefer it like this. Uh, and as well, we only calculate how big things should be when there has been a resize event. We're not doing it every single frame. Uh, so we've got a lot of performance increase solely from that. And you can see here, your on GUI method as well, if you are using this, it becomes a lot nicer. Um, so yeah, it's a nice way of going about it, I think. Thanks for watching.